king. Ah, see where it's at. There it is. Wow, it's going faster than I thought. I don't remember when we went to look at this for a few years ago. Oh my gosh. It would have been, um, let's see, we looked out here and not from that mm -hmm. angle, so it would have been in 07, I believe. So, so we went to look at this boat because we couldn't find anything else at the time. I mean, in Missouri, on the way, so there's just nothing. So, went looked at this boat. The guy, the guy did fess up that he had driven it with no oil pressure. He claimed that it turned off in time. He thought he turned it off in time. But I knew he was lying, so I knew the motor was probably damaged. And that's when all the fun started. So we towed it home. We, you know, the interior didn't look too bad. What's the name of our boat again? It's a Sea Ray, but it's not a Seville. It's a. No, I, I can know. never remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, so, you know, it doesn't look too bad. We were thinking, well, what, you it's know, what Monaco. can we do? Monaco. Yeah. It's a 205 Monaco. So we started working on it. And one thing led to another. It turned out that, and I don't know if the guy that, oh, that sold it to us knew this or not, but somebody along the line had actually put a sheet of plywood on top of the old rotted floor and put new carpet on top of it and then left it. And and the guy we bought it from had it under a tree. Yeah, and then at some point it did get full of water and stuff. But anyway, the floor was completely gone. And, you know, I was expecting to have to pull the motor out, which I did, and rebuild it because I wanted to. I didn't, you know, we didn't want to even think about that the motor might not be good and be out in the middle of Lake Powell or somewhere where it's pretty hard to get back. So... Most of that dust it didn't, wasn't already on the motor. That was caused when I was already learned that the floor was bad and I was cutting fiberglass. So that's just the beginning of getting, when I realized how bad it was, getting the motor out. Taking pictures so I wouldn't forget where all the wiring went. There's more of these than I thought there were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see how fast it goes once you get started? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is tear down or if this is rebuild. I guess it's rebuilt because that looks like a new gasket, although it did have a new gasket on it. So anyway, mm -hmm. but this is this is what it started off at, or what it started off as, and then eventually just turned into just to rip this. it all out. And then it was yeah, just rip it all out and start over, which we never intended to do, but you know that's that's the way it mm -hmm. goes. Sorry for the bad pictures. I don't know what but that is. You do what you got to do. What is it? Oh, that's, that's just my steps stairs. up to the back. To, yeah. I finally built some stairs so I could just walk up because I knew it was, was going to be a long year of climbing in and out. Okay, this is starting. Is this starting to rebuild? No, we're still. Yeah, we're just, this is just right down to the. Right down to the bare Right hole. down to the hull. Mm -hmm. And then new stringers and the whole nine yards. And I soon, I quickly learned that in a boat, there's no such thing as measuring. You just have to level the boat wherever it's sitting. And then that way you can level the floor inside the boat, make it match, because there's just no reference point to measure from. So. Fiberglassed over all of the. Yeah, every, everything was fiberglass. And then, of course, the outside had some damage, which we knew. And 
I really, I really had no real experience with doing gel coat stuff. So we just kind of went by, you know, there was no YouTube in our life at the time. So we just kind of made stuff up, but I found out that you can mix talcum powder with, with, uh, fiberglass and make a nice gel coat kind of under the gel coat. So we mixed that and there should be some pictures, more pictures of the, the hole, but it has a nice aluminum 35 gallon gas tank that I cleaned up and repainted. And All the holes were for putting the foam back yeah, in. Yeah, I missed that, but the little holes were so when we refoamed the sides so that it's unsinkable. And then mm -hmm. we ended up just getting the, the carpet at like Lowe's or Home Depot because <laughs> yeah. it just, you know, it just seemed like it didn't matter at that point. Then we decided to go to the family configuration because we like to water ski and climbing over that big wide back you know sunbathing whatever it is thing just didn't work for us so we went ahead and just put it back to like a family setting while we were doing it we made the um, openings for under the seats for storage bigger yeah everything we were really tiny before yeah and then i i rebuilt the you know we made the cover for the boat in two parts so that i could take it out and we did all we did all this ourselves with a sewing an old so singer sewing machine and well, actually it's a, a Kenmore sewing machine. Mm -hmm. We left the we left the gauges and everything the same. I took them all out and cleaned them and remounted them and everything. But we that's that's the only part of the boat we didn't do. Yeah, we redid the side panels the way we liked it. Yeah, all the side panels. And, and we went with all white because anybody that's ever been boating, particularly in the southwest where we live now, you know that anything that's dark colored at all really gets hot. And white just never gets hot. You can always get in the boat. It's nice and cool. So. And there you have it. So the next pictures maybe will be of the boat running. 